180 inches in length. Next, I plan my maple strips to exactly 25 millimeters wide. And my walnut strips to seven millimeters. I then cut up my walnut and maple so that they would have the least amount of waste possible when gluing and cutting them up later. Then I glued up the maple between the two walnut strips and let the glue dry for about two hours before unclamping, but I waited a full 24 hours before moving on to the next step to avoid the glue breaking apart. I then ran the glued up pieces through the planer to ensure they were level, and then I added the mahogany pieces as well to make sure they were all the exact same thickness. Next I planed the widths of all my strips, alternating which side I took off each pass to ensure one side of the walnut didn't end up thinner than the other. Now that I had all my pieces glued up and dimensioned, I can start cutting out the final pieces for the cutting board. First, I started up by squaring up one edge of the board. Then I set a stop block at 111 millimeters so I can make the same cut repeatedly. You will need 15 pieces of this size. Next, I cut the smaller squares that will be 37 millimeters. This is the same dimension for the glued up maple and walnut as it is for the mahogany. You'll need 8 of the glued up ones in 24 of the mahogany. 
I used one piece of wood to help hold down the pieces while cross cutting so that I could keep my fingers a safe distance from the blade. Next I arranged all the pieces into the pattern to make sure everything lined up and I had all the pieces there. One thing to note is that three of your squares should equal one of the longer strips. This glue up can be a bit confusing so laying all your pieces out beforehand can really help with that as well. I applied glue to all sides that would be touching and started laying them out. I put masking tape over the boards that I used to clamp the board together so that it wouldn't stick to it as badly. Also, since this board is relatively thin, you, you really got to be careful that you do not get any bowing in the clamping process. One thing you can do to help with this is to hit the pieces in the cutting board down with another piece of wood, preferably this one softer so that you don't end up denting the cutting board. Once that dried overnight, I ran the board through the drum sander a few times to even out any unlevelness from the glue up. If you don't have a drum sander, a belt sander will do the exact same thing, it just takes a little more time and effort. I then filled up any hairline gaps that are in my board using sawdust and glue. Doing this really makes them almost impossible to see, although this won't work if your gaps are too big. I gave all the edges a 1 8 round over, followed by some light hand sanding. Finally, it's time for the mineral oil. Afterwards, I applied a beeswax cutting board conditioner to furthermore seal the board. Here is my finished result. If you enjoyed this video, then please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already so that you do not miss out on any more videos like this.